Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in Psalm 38 as we go through the Bible for the fifth time in the last 37 years. All of those series, this one included, it's all archived at thebibleversebyverse.com where you can go choose, click, and listen. Study any part of the Bible that you want to study using my audio Bible messages, just like today. Again, that's at thebibleversebyverse.com. Check it out today. <clears throat> and Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 38, verse 1. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me, and thy hot displeasure. I would say, without fear of contradiction, that there is nothing worse than to have God angry at you. And, well, the only thing worse would be for God to rebuke you or punish you when he is angry. The thought of it caused David to shudder. A godly person will understand and they will accept the loving rebuke of God their father when they sin. That rebuke, that chastisement, is to be expected. But it is a horrifying thought, and it should scare anyone to death if they believe that God is actually angry at them and that he will punish them in his anger. No wonder when Jesus returns and the wicked people of the world knew that, no, finally, no, that they have lost their battle with God. No wonder when they see Jesus, they cry for the mountains and the rocks to fall on them and hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. The Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. I can't imagine it. If his chastisement, which is done in love with his children, if that stings, I can't imagine what his vengeful wrath, when he is raging over sin and impenitence, would be like. And I don't want to find out. Two, for thine arrow stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me greatly. So God dished out some physical discipline to David because of his sin. And David also feels some spiritual pain after his sin. And that's probably worse than anything. <clears throat> the guilt, the sadness over offending God is tough on God's people. Because if you're God's people and you're saved and you have the Spirit of God in, in you, the last thing that you want to do is hurt God. Verse 3, There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones <clears throat> because of my sin. See, a sick spirit oftentimes makes a body sick. Because there is a connection there. And although not all sickness is a result of sin, sin will result in negative effects on the body. A soul that has been defiled by willful sin will in some manner weaken the physical body that it is inside of. And that's what David is experiencing. For, for mine iniquities are gone over mine head, like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. David saw his sinful self, and it was an ugly sight. It is horrifying to see yourself as you really are. In darkness, a dirty face looks clean. But when you get into the light, then you see just how filthy that you really are. And it's the same in the spiritual realm. Spiritually dull sinners feel good about themselves because they don't see their sin. 
and they're measuring themselves maybe against other sinners, and they seem kind of clean, actually. <clears throat> but when their conscience is awakened by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, like David's was, that's when they can see their iniquities are over their head. And they know that they're in big trouble. They know just how filthy they are in the sight of God because they're even filthy to themselves. And that's when they know that they need a Savior. Which is why preachers, pastors, modern evangelicals who don't call sin, sin who never preach about judgment, never preach about hell, never call sin, sin. They call it a dysfunction, a behavior disorder, troublesome behavior, anything just sweet and innocuous, not to offend anybody, will never. That's why nobody ever gets saved in those churches. No one ever gets saved because they're not confronted with the truthfulness of God's word, the holiness of God, and their own filthiness and their desperate need of a Savior. Because the preachers are too cowardly to proclaim the pure word of God. I wouldn't give two cents to a preacher like that. And you got scrambled eggs for brains if you do. Because they're doing the work of the devil. I don't care how entertaining they are. They're doing the work of the devil. And I don't care how much they talk about Jesus, some Jesus that they have made up. He's certainly not the Jesus of the Bible who talked more about hell than he did heaven, who talked more about hell and judgment than anybody else, all other people combined in Scripture. And these jokers never even mention the word hell or repent or sin or judgment. Oh, that's just so uncool. Moret does. Oh, yeah, did you ever hear Moret? Yeah, he does it. And then they roll their eyes, you know. <laughs> How quaint. Moret is so quaint in his old-fashioned ways. Yeah, the Bible is old-fashioned. The Word of God is like Jesus himself. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Whether you think it's cool or not, Five, <clears throat> my wounds are repulsive and corrupt because of my foolishness. This is an awful picture of physical de disease that came upon David because of his sin. His wounds stunk and they were corrupt. Also reflects the condition of a soul that has sin. Stinks and is corrupt. Back many years ago, I've worked many part-time jobs over the year to help years, <clears throat> over the last 40-some years to help support Scripture verse by verse. One of them was a delivery truck. And I used to take my son when he was like 9 during the summer, 10. He used to go with me every day. And we would do a lot of deliveries, you know, around town and sometimes out of town. And one of the places that we would go quite often would be the... Uh, Oh, what was it called? Sewage waste plant? <laughs> yeah, the sewage waste plant. My goodness. We knock on the front door, and we had to go all the way through the building to get to the office. And it was like walking through, well, a sewage waste plant. You can just imagine. It was horrible. Horrible. It, it felt like you stuck your head in a toilet. I remember one time, my son and I, we were walking through, and one, one of the rooms we had to walk through was this big open area, the cafeteria, and all these workers were sitting there eating their lunch. In the midst of this, I thought, what in the world do these guys think smells bad? Well, that, that's a good reminder of what sin is like to God. And that's how we feel when we compare our sins and what we are like to God's word and God's holiness. It's bad. It's bad. And the results of sin, the chastisement of God, are oftentimes corrupt, just like that sewage plant. Six. I am troubled. 
I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all day long. Well, the high price of sin, don't you think? Very high price. There is a terrible spiritual and physical and mental price for sin. And it's often just brought on by the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. That's what David is describing. It doesn't get any more miserable than a child of God living with unconfessed sin. The Holy Spirit isn't going to condemn you, but he's going to make you feel dirty, which you should feel, so that you repent and confess. Seven, for my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and very broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. David is experiencing some type of deep inflammation, it seems. It's burning in his skin. It's bad. And David also perceives that the physical pain is punishment for his sin. And we are once again reminded <clears throat> that God's gift of salvation pays for the eternal suffering of sin, but it does not pay for the temporal suffering of sin. That is what we must deserve. It doesn't make us right with God, <clears throat> but it fulfills the scripture, whatsoever a man sows, that shall they also reap. Nine, Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hidden from thee. So God knew how David had longed for his good health to return. God was not un unaware of David's longing. <clears throat> God is not unaware of any of our longings either. He understands us better than we understand ourselves. He knows those things that you long for and you don't have. And if you're a Christian, those things will be in line with Scripture. So sometimes it's hard to figure out why we don't have them. Because we see how they line up with Scripture. <clears throat> And God gives us credit for wanting good things that line up with Scripture. But sometimes it's just not in his plan to give us those things. And no, it's not a lack of faith on your part. It's not because you didn't confess that you have those things enough times. It's not that you didn't give to the ministry so-called of these word of faith liars. All that garbage. Verse 10, my heart panteth, my strength faileth me. As for the light of mine eyes, it also is gone from me. David's heart is racing, and he says that he's going blind. Both David's physical and spiritual strength are draining fast, and it's all a result of his sin. Boy, when the devil says, come on, go ahead and sin, you know it's going to be fun. And there's, you're not going to get caught. There's not going to be any consequences. After all, you prayed the sinner's prayer. And don't tell me he doesn't say that to professing Christians. And then they do. And if their conscience isn't covered over by a lukewarm pastor and lukewarm fellow so-called Christians, they feel guilt, they feel miserable, which they should, which is the best thing that could happen to them. Eleven, my lovers and my friends stand aloof from my sore, and my kinsmen stand afar off. Yeah, in addition to his physical and spiritual suffering, David was also alone. And as a result, David is feeling lonely, and there is a reason for that. You know, no one can share in the personal torment of a soul who has sinned against God. You gotta carry that you gotta carry that torment all by yourself whether it's in this life or in hell. You suffer for your sin in eternity in hell. And there isn't anyone that can help you, even if they wanted to, because you're going to suffer alone. Study all of God's Word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you can be by praying for me <clears throat> and God's Word. And when you take a break from studying with me, at the Bible, verse by verse .com. You can go to the front page, click the donate button, 
and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry, and I'd appreciate it. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thanks for studying with me. So long.